Well, good morning, Rock Worship Center. I want to welcome all first-time visitors in the house and online. We appreciate all of you <coughs> worshiping with us, choosing to worship with us today. Today is a special day for fathers, so let's acknowledge our fathers and want you to say Happy Father's Day. Please stand for the reading of the word. I'm reading Matthews chapter 7, verse 7 through 11. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks will be open. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more with your heavenly Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask of him. Amen. Amen. Um, right now, let's keep standing for worship. Thank you. Oh 
I had somebody said, somebody told me, said, hey, look, I forgot my hearing aids today. Can you be loud? Amen. So can we all one more time just hallelujah? Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't think God needs hearing aids, but I think he loves to hear us shout hallelujah every now and then. Amen. Well, it is good. Just like Kimberly said, it, we welcome everybody here in the house today. Amen. And yes. It is Father's Day, praise the Lord. Praise we do Lord. need to recognize. What was that back there? Praise yes! The Lord. Yes! <laughs> we do need to recognize our fathers, amen? But just a couple of things. I do still need some volunteers for helper positions. This is not teaching, this is helpers for our BBS coming up in the month of July. So if you can help with that, please see me, let me know. Um, we welcome our teenagers, definitely. We want you to be a part of it. Uh, we're going to have some fun. Any um, other adults that want to help, that would be very helpful as well. So just uh, let me know. Uh, we also have our men's and women's uh, fellowship breakfast coming up. Uh, so just a quick reminder, ladies, we will be meeting here at the church at 9 a.m. This is bring your own breakfast or eat before you come, whichever way. But we will actually be taking a part of the Proverbs 31 woman and doing a study or little tips, helpful tips for homesteading. So anybody who's interested in learning more about canning, preparing food, for your family, that kind of stuff, this is the day for you. Amen? Mm -hmm. Thank 
Thank you. <laughs> He's happy. Send, make sure uh, make sure she comes. Robin comes so she can prepare you some food. It's the last Saturday of the month. Yes, <laughs> nine a.m. <laughs> He's the only one that said amen. Nobody else. <laughs> yeah. So make sure it's the last Saturday. We that we just went with that instead of fourth Saturday. All the yeah last. All right. So how many fathers we got in the house? All right, let's stand, and if y'all would, just come up front. Yes, we want to see you. We want to recognize Come on, all, all of the dads in the house, y'all come on down. Yeah, up dads, stepdads, uh, father-in-laws, I mean, all that good stuff. Pops. I, th I think we may have a bigger Old turn, man. I think we have, may have a bigger turnout <laughs> of, of dads than we had moms on Mother's Day. Old man, how many old mans we got in here? You know, there's that saying too. <laughs> oh, good. I got some more tickets up here. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Praise the Lord. All right. How many, stu uh, how many of our kids remember math? How many is up there? <laughs> Yeah, lots of people. All right. So I've got some ladies that are going to help me with passing out some tickets. So what we want to do is um, definitely recognize um, you, but we also want to um, do a drawing and hopefully... Um, there's, what, five people will win some fabulous prizes, right? All right. All right. 24, yes. Praise the Lord. 24, thank you. I appreciate that. 24, make sure you have the right ticket now. <laughs> we really got some nice prizes. But, you know, while, while they're passing, those tickets, you know, our guys, um, you are the head of the household, amen. amen. Now, with that, there's a big responsibility, amen. I mean, you've got to keep it in line. <laughs> now, that's a big task, and so in that, we have to keep a right standing with God, amen. Because you're going to need the father, just like we talked to our son about, the good, good father. You're going to need the father to lead your family. Because not always do we want to follow, right? <laughs> it's okay. We're in the house of the Lord. And only truth will set us free. Amen? <laughs> so there are times we do not want to follow as wives or as children. But we have to do what's right. So if we want to be right in right standing with God, then we need to pray for you that you'll see it our way. <laughs> Can I get agreement? <laughs> so, you know, we got some praying women in this house. I'm just telling y'all. <laughs> You know, it is a big task. It, it can be scary. Just like Kimberly was talking about coming up front. You know, leading a family can be scary because if you do this decision, this could happen. If you make this decision, this could happen. And you just got to make a decision. So we're just going to pray a blessing over you, okay? We're going to pray the word over you. So uh, in Proverbs, the righteous man tells or. Proverbs tells us that the righteous man walks in his integrity. So integrity is very important. We do what we say we do. Amen? Amen. So his children are blessed because of that. Amen? So in Ephesians 6, so we're going to go back here again, kiddos. <laughs> Ephesians 6, um, starting with verse 1. So children, obey your parents in the Lord. That means we must accept their guidance and discipline as his representatives for this is right. Alright? And we are to honor our father and our mother. We're to be respectful to them. Alright, now come on. 
This is the first commandment with a promise. So we want the promises of God, right? All right. So instructions to the fathers. Do not provoke your children. <laughs> we do get mad sometimes at our kids, but, you know, it is our best to make it right with our kids. Amen. So sometimes we will provoke them because we're provoked. <laughs> so we're praying a blessing. Amen. So um, we are to bring them up. This is from Ephesians, y'all. Uh, to bring them up tenderly with loving kindness in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So you got to know the word. Amen. If you know the word, you're going to be able to do this very thing. Now, we got to want to hear the word. See, that's one thing. We can know the word, but if we don't want to hear it and apply it, that's another thing. So we're leading our families. We're leading our children. We're praying and leading them according to the word. We're seeking the best. This is out of 1 John. We're seeking the best for one another. For love is from God. And everyone who loves others is born of God. And knows God through personal experience. We have a relationship with the Father. Amen. And therefore we can have a relationship with our children and our household. Y'all want peace in your household, right? There's nothing like burnt food. I want you to think about it. Sometimes those were not truly accidents. <laughs> or slamming doors. Or dirty laundry. Or pink laundry. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. I'm, I'm sorry, ladies. I'm telling some of our secrets. <laughs> uh, but God is on the throne. Amen. So as God's own chosen people who are holy and well-beloved, we are to put a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience which has the power to endure whatever injustice or unpleasantness comes with good temper this is the word bearing graciously with one another and willingly forgiving forgiveness yes forgiveness Willingly forgiving each other if one has a cause for complaint against another. So let's talk it out. Let's have those discussions. Sometimes that's very challenging for men, but let's have those discussions. It's not always, yes, dear. It's a discussion. <laughs> so, but then we wrap our, ourselves in unselfish love. So that's the part of the father. He sacrifices for his family. Amen. So let the peace of Christ be the controlling factor in your hearts. To this peace indeed you were called as members in one body and to be thankful to God for everything. Amen. And then we pray this final blessing over you that you may succeed and prosper and be in good health. Amen. Even as your soul prospers. Amen. 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 All right. So, everybody have a ticket? Everybody have a ticket? Yeah. Ladies, would y'all like to draw a number, please? It is six, seven, five, three, eight, two. Who is it? Ooh, All right, Brian. All right. All right, so Brian's going to pick one of the fabulous prizes. Okay, he got a chair. All right, the next one is six, seven, five, three, nine, six. Now, do you want the car wash, or you want the grill set, or another chair? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you can put them in <laughs> Just a reminder, those are cooler chairs, but that's for your 
favorite non-alcoholic beverages <laughs> in the last year. Okay. Sea salt. Sea salt. All right, next one is 675405. <laughs> While everybody is grabbing their seat, um, I do want to share this. We're excited to announce uh, Jeff Hagler has reached out to me over the last couple of weeks, been in prayer, and has asked to join the Rock Worship Center today. So we welcome him in as a member of the church today. Hallelujah. Um, as we do this, I just ask if there's anybody else in the church that has not joined at this time and you would like to be a member of the church we do not make it difficult to join the church. My brother asked me, what does it take to join? I said, just let us know you want to join. When you got saved, you entered, you became a member of the kingdom of God. Amen. And if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you're, you're part of the kingdom. So I don't think we have to jump through hoops to join the church either. But we welcome you as a member of the Rock Worship Center today. And it's always an open invitation. If anybody's here you want to join, just come see me and we will be happy to welcome you in. So God bless you, brother. Glad to have you here as part of the church today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now I got all these extra notes up here. I better get rid of these. I've already got too much for today. Um, Joe, I think you need to pay attention on the bottom of that bucket you picked up that in very in very small print. It said the winner of this has to, it's very small print. It might be in the microscope. It says the winner of this bucket has to wash Pastor Daniel's truck at least once a month. Amen. All right. Congratulations to all of our winners. But even if you did not win a prize, you know you're still winners in God's eyes, right? We, we do honor our fathers today. Um, we've had a little bit of fun talking to some of the dads in here today. And, you know, I asked Zach. Zach's got two little babies running around here. I said, did you get breakfast in bed and big Father's Day welcome this morning? He said, no, I didn't get any of that. I said, welcome to fatherhood. <laughs> I said, it's just like Sundays at church on Mother's Day. We have special we have special ministry and all that for our Mother's Day. Brenda said, what are you preaching about? I said, my title is Session 16 of Red Letters in the Face of Temptation, Part 3, Lust of the Eye and Pride of Life. So all our dads are, where's our sweet little sermon at today? We don't get that. We are honored by God to be fathers and he entrusts all that into us. But I hope all you kids that are out here, got your parents here, got your dad here with you, take care of him today. Especially those who got the chairs. Y'all need to have children. Y'all need to be able to sit down in those chairs and let your children serve you food and rub your feet and all that good stuff. And even if you didn't win, you still got these beautiful little girls over there. I know they're going to treat you right. Praise the Lord. Are y'all ready to go ahead and get started? Because I know it's Father's Day. Y'all want to get in and get out. Take care of all the stuff. Going out to eat. Got special lunch at home. Whatever it may be. But God bless you all again. Thank you for being here and being part of this. Uh, I am going to kind of jump right in because I do have a lot to cover. Is that okay? Y'all ready? Y'all awake? Oh, offering. See, I'm ready to preach. I forgot. We got, we got thrown off. 
I got to receive an offering. Y'all, thank you for reminding me. I'm about to let y'all off the hook today. Let's go ahead and tithes and offerings. Let's do that. Don't forget Turbyville Children's Hall. We just got a couple more weeks of raising funds for this. Thankful for everybody. Last week, we had several people that gave online, just continuing to bless that ministry. It's a great cause. They do, they do need funds to help with the children that are there. Uh, also remember, if there's anybody in our church that has any interest in fostering children, please let me know. We do have Falcons Children Home in North Carolina that can directly place children in Christian foster care without going through the county systems. But Turbyville is getting set up for that in South Carolina right now. They will possibly be able to cross over the North Carolina border in certain, certain regions. But um, I hope y'all wonder, if anybody ever had to deal with anything government related, there's money involved. No, nothing's free when you're working with the government. So they're going through a lot of fees and stuff right now. But, but also just taking care of helping to feed and clothe these children down there. So continue that. Tithes and offerings, we have your basket right here. Can we have the online giving up there? Online giving, you can give at trwcmonroe.com or .org. You can actually type in the Rock Worship Center Monroe dot com or org go to the online giving you can take that phone number if you want to pull your phone out now to do it later just take a picture get that phone number set it up one time and you can just text the dollar amount and it'll go straight to the giving system we're going to at this time just let you stand up and let's praise that the lord his blessings upon our offering we're going to get you on up here and move right into the next part of service just a reminder no kids church today all the kids y'all have to stay in here and listen to me preach today so let's go to the Lord. Father God, we bless you and thank you for all that you do each and every day. Thank you for this beautiful Father's Day. Thank you for each of these men of God that you brought into this house today. We do pray a blessing on them and pray a blessing on the families. Lord, we know that we have those joining us online today that are not able to be with us. We just pray that where they are, they're experiencing your presence today, God. And Lord, we just pray for this time of offering. We just ask your blessing on the gift and the giver. Every dollar, every cent that comes in that you just give us the wisdom to be good stewards and to sow your seed into good soil. So God, we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So you guys are welcome to come on up and bring your offering before the Lord. All right. So we almost started this once before, so we're going to go ahead and get started with it now. Amen. Um, if you've not been being part of these series, they are available on our Facebook page and also our YouTube page. You can go find us on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, we, we do Facebook Live every Sunday, and Chip wasn't here last Sunday, but his, his wife took care of him and she made sure everything got shared. And So um, we make these available. We're sticking with this series called Red Letters. This year, we're talking about the, the words of red in the Bible, Jesus' words. Amen. For me, it's a special blessing to be able to just share Jesus' words anytime that we can. But also within this, like I said, we've been doing a little bit of a sub-series, and we're going to just continue reading in that today. Um, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17, we've shared about this for the last couple of weeks. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen. So again, this is kind of like a, a bit of a sub-series, and we're going to be doing that for a while. Um, we're talking about facing temptation, being in the face of temptation. I don't know how many, how many people have been dealing with any temptation in your life. We had a big bag of candy that we took to us with the to the beach. Amen. Y'all can't I can't have candy anywhere around me. And you know, you go buy these small size candy bars. You know what happens when you buy small size candy bars? You eat more of you eat more candy than if you just bought one big candy bar. But temptation is a real thing that we all deal with, and we're talking about this the reality of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And how they work in our lives, individually, each of our lives. And we have to understand where all this originates. I want y'all to say something with me. Say, the devil. the devil. The devil. It all originates. We go back to the first temptation of man. Where did it come from? Come from the devil. Amen. Is he still active today? Yes, he is. Is he still trying to catch you with temptation? Yes, he is. Is he successful sometimes? 
Yes, he is. So we have to learn how to deal with this and how to overcome this. And the, the whole idea behind this is equipping us to come and be equipped to overcome temptation. We were talking about this again this morning before church. Talking about doing active ministry on the outside of the church. We're supposed to be doing that. Amen. On your job, wherever you may go. Brent, I reminded, shared this um, that last Saturday of the month when the ladies meet here. Guys, we're still going to meet at Golden Crown for breakfast that morning. But Todd wants to set up a motorcycle ride after breakfast. We're going to be riding down to Blackjack, Harley Davidson, and Florence. If anybody wants to ride with us, we'd love for you to connect with us and ride down there doing ministry. We've got something we're going to uh, be talking more about very soon, this rolling revival where we're going to be trying to reach some people in the motorcycle community, setting up in different areas, bringing a little, little outreach. So we would encourage you to be part of that. But we come to church to get equipped. We come to church to get equipped to do ministry on the outside. We come to church to get equipped to stand against the devil when he comes and he tries to tempt you. Amen. Amen. I, I'm going to make sure. I, brother, am I loud enough today? Yes. I want to make sure. Because I, I, I need to hear this. We all need to hear this. That's what this is about. God's word is equipping us to overcome the, the temptation of the devil. Amen. So again today, we're going to take a look at how, here's the devil. He's coming hard at Jesus with temptation. We talked about this last week. Jesus had been, just got baptized, just got filled with the Holy Spirit, just activated for his work of ministry on the earth. He had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Last week we talked about how the enemy came to the flesh. He was hungry. He came at him with food. So here he is again. He's bringing this temptation. And once again, we're going to see as we continue from last week. That Jesus is standing strong on the word of God. Amen. The sword of the spirit. I hope y'all remember that. I hope you've been reading your word. Because this is equipping you. This is, this is a weapon against the enemy. Amen. So this week, Matthew chapter 4, verses 5 through 7. Then the devil took him up to the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Let's pray right there. Father, we bless you and thank you again for your word and all that you do in our lives every day. Let us hear your word today. God, equip us. Let us apply this in our lives so we can overcome the temptation of the devil. We give you glory for it today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You shall not tempt the Lord your God. This is going to be some fun preaching today if y'all give me a minute, okay? Because I think this is some stuff we all deal with. I'm going to pause for a second. This isn't in my notes, but I shared this with Brenda. This is me on vacation. This is me at the beach. We're over there enjoying the beach. I said, Brenda, let me share something with you. I said, I started reading that and I started thinking the devil took Jesus up to the pinnacle of the temple. Has anybody ever wondered how tall is that? How high up was that pinnacle of the temple that Jesus took, that the devil took Jesus up on? Well, I had to go back and study that a little bit. Y'all know what I did, right? I asked the Google. So I asked the Google. I said, so Google, <laughs> I said, how tall was that temple that the devil took Jesus up on? I said, well, the pinnacle of the temple was about 15 stories above the plaza of the temple. Okay, so 15 stories. Where's my, where's my construction, guys? How tall is that? 150 feet, 10, 10 feet per story. So that's about 150 feet. I was sharing this to Brenda when we were on the seventh floor of the hotel. I wanted to stay on the 11th floor. <laughs> Brenda says seven sounds much better. But start thinking, that's still seventh floor. That's 70 feet, right? So start thinking about jumping off of here, just trusting God's going to catch you. So he's got 15 stories up, but listen, that's above the plaza. The temple was on the temple mound, remember that? So from the pinnacle of the temple to the ground was 30 stories. So how many feet is that, Spider-Man? 300 feet. And it's not just Spider-Man. We came to the conclusion it's the amazing Spider-Man. So, so <laughs> He came in wearing his name on his shirt today, so we had to go with that. So here's the devil. He's got Jesus up on 300 feet in the air. And he said, why don't you just go ahead and jump off of here? Why don't you just go ahead and jump off if you are, if you are the Son of God? We're going to get to that part here in just a minute. 
But today's message is twofold. We're talking about the lust of the eye, and we're also going to talk about the pride of life. Because these two work together so closely. If you'll hear this, you'll understand this lust of the eye and pride. They, they get tied up together to try to bring you down. We've already used this definition, but I'm going to bring it up again. The lust of the eyes, metaphorically, that's important today. Metaphorically, the eyes of the mind, the faculty of knowing, but it's also desire excited by seeing. We've already talked about this a little bit, but remember when, when, it starts, when something starts with the eye, it can lead to the flesh. You see it, then you want it. You want it, then you go after it. Amen? So, we again, the lust of the eye, we talked about this again, but you see it, got to have it. Anybody understand that? See a little puppy on the side of the road. You see it. I ain't got room for another dog in the house, but you got to have it. Can I get an amen? amen? At least one right back here. Uh, but you, you see a new pair of shoes, and you just got to have those shoes. You see a new guitar. I got a couple of guys in here. You just gotta have it. You see another shiny part for that Harley Davidson. You just gotta have it. Elisha got raised. Elisha, how many hats you got now? A lot. You see a new hat you like. You see it and you just have to have it. And this, as simple as that sounds, this can grow into some major problems in your life if you're not careful with that. And I just prayed about this, and the Lord showed me some real-life examples. And I, I'm not bringing these up on slides, but I want to talk about it. This can affect your health. This can affect your health because you eat the wrong foods. Or can I say sometimes we eat too much of the wrong foods? I ate way too much of the wrong foods over the last few days. And somebody brought donuts up in the house today. I love you, Art. Where are you hiding at? Bringing donuts up in the house. And I did not eat one. Thank you, Jesus, for strength. Because <laughs> I've, I've been preaching to myself. I knew temptation was coming. But we can eat the wrong foods. And like we talked about this. You know, you're sitting around the house watching TV at night. And the, the restaurant commercials come on. And, and it just hits at the right time. And you get so hungry, you go to the cabinet or you go to the candy bowl. And you see it. And it looks good. And then you have to have it. I was actually thinking about Krispy Kreme Donut because on the way to the beach we had to go through Florence. I don't know if anybody else knows this. Have you ever been through Florence and that Krispy Kreme Donut sign was not on? <laughs> right there in 52, right there in 95. Every time I've ever been by there, that red light donut sign is on. And it's like, you know, there's that temptation. And we did not stop. But had I stopped at Krispy Kreme and I seen the donuts, I was going to have some donuts. Amen. But we know it's a temptation. But again, it starts with the eyes. You look at it, it looks good, so you've got to have it. I started thinking back. I said, where does, where does temptation originate? The devil in the Garden of Eden. We remember that. I started thinking that fruit that he showed Eve must have looked awful good, or he made it look awful good. Because once she saw it and she listened to him, she just had to have it and ended up taking a bite out of it. This whole lust of the eye can also, it, you know, it, it, it can just, it can lead to so many problems. It can even lead to smoking and drinking. Did you know that our body, there is no natural desire for smoking or drinking unless, unless it's a fetus that was affected by it during pregnancy, which nicotine addiction and drug and alcohol addiction can be passed down. But outside somebody who's never encountered it, I want you to think about it. what's your initial reaction to cigarette smoke before you ever start smoking. Make you choke. Remember that first time you tasted a beer? You wanted to spit it out. Can I get an amen? amen. Or drugs or alcohol. It's the thing about it. But here's, we don't have a natural desire for this, but the only reason we ever try these things is because you saw it. Then you wanted it. Then you had to have it. Okay? But what it was you saw, you saw somebody else doing it. And they was cool. You thought they looked cool. I won't make, I won't, I'm not even going to ask you to raise your hands, but how many people in here can say, the first time I smoked a cigarette is because I saw one of them TV. I grew up during the Marlboro Man days, okay? The Marlboro Man was a cool dude. I mean, they made him look cool riding out there herding cattle, smoking them Marlboros, okay? Look cool. 
you know, they still did magazine ads and all that stuff. And everybody looked cool smoking cigarettes. I was even worse. Cool kids in my neighborhood chewed tobacco. So I saw them do it. They looked cool. I saw it. I figured I wanted to look cool too. So what did I do? I tried. Anybody here remember the first time you put chewing tobacco in your mouth? Somebody stand up and tell me if you had a great experience the first time you put chewing tobacco in your mouth. Nobody. Because your body rejects it. But the lust of the eye. We want to fit in. We want to look cool. We want to be like the cool kids. This, this can go deep. This goes into smoking and drinking, but it also goes into addiction and so many other different areas that we start looking at. But like I said, that's the thing. Next thing you're dealing with addictions. I know people right now that I'm praying with them to quit smoking, and they've been trying to quit smoking for a long time, but they're so deeply addicted to nicotine that it's not easy. But it all started because you wanted to look cool. Lust of the eyes. What if I could tell you this can cause financial problems? Okay, because you buy too much stuff that looked good, and you had to have it. Anybody remember when QVC first got started? <laughs> Lord, I, I remember, you know, I'm old, so I show myself sometimes. Kids this day said, you actually remember a day and time you didn't have cable TV? I didn't have cable TV until I was 23 years old. But when my mama first got cable TV and discovered QVC, that woman bought all kinds of stuff. After she passed away, we were still finding stuff, brand new stuff in QVC boxes that had never been opened, but it was on QVC. And she was watching about 9 or 10 o'clock at night, and it looked good. So she had to have it. So she bought it. But that happens with us. We can actually, we can actually have bad credit because we finance too much stuff. For those of y'all who bought Harley Davidson's from me back a few years ago, I love you. And I hope you could have afford. I hope you could afford what you bought for me, because there were people that could not afford what they were buying. And I was like, "Oh, good! I, I actually got in trouble." I'm, I'm off on the tangent. Is that okay? I got in trouble when I worked at Harley Davidson because the sales manager heard me telling the boy, "You cannot afford a motorcycle. You need you can you need to go buy yourself a one thousand, two thousand dollar used motorcycle and ride it till you can afford one of these." I got fussed at. He said, don't you ever tell anybody that. You get them in the finance office, we'll convince them they can't afford it. And they do a good job of that. I said, no, this is my cousin's boy. I won't be in trouble if I don't send him out of here. But um, it can cause this. Um, you can even find yourself where the pr producers of that TV show called Hoarders is knocking on your door and say, hey, we heard you got a problem. And you got all this stuff. We want to do, do a special appearance for you. But that's some real life stuff that we look at. The lust of the eye can lead in these problems. But I want to add a little different look at this. And this is a directly related to our red letter verse of the day. It's not just what you see, but it's how you look at things. Say perception. Perception. Y'all can say that right? Perception. How you perceive things. The, the mind's eye. We look at it as how we perceive things. Um, sometimes it can not just stuff, but it's about our, our self, our current circumstance, our position in life, and how we see where we're at in life. Um, it can get you looking at your problem instead of looking at God. Amen. It can make your problem look real big and make God look real small if you let the devil get in your mind. Because the natural eye will always look for natural solutions to a problem. Yes. Amen? Yes. Ever, ever wish you had prayed at the beginning instead of the end? The spiritual eye will always look to God for an answer. In this situation where the devil had just taken Jesus to the top of the temple and he said, look at your situation now. Look at, look at where you're at. Look where you're at. How are you going to get down from here? I brought you up, but I ain't taking you down. How are you going to get down from here? You might as well jump. Why don't you just jump off of here? Why don't you just, you can do this. You're the, you're the son of God. I, I could go into a whole different message there, but people do that to us as Christians. Oh, well, you're a Christian. Why don't you just pray and make it happen? But that's who's that coming from? The devil. But the devil says, why don't you just go ahead and jump? You can do this. And again, the eye can be deceiving. We're talking about the mind's eye, how we perceive things, how we look at things. And, and if, if you ever looked at the decision, have you ever looked at the circumstance and made a rash decision? It looked good at the moment, so you jumped into it. I was going to pick on Brenda. Can I pick on you for a minute? I'm saying pick on. This is going back in our day and time, back in the 80s. 
um, on railroad trestles. Sound, everybody looked cool going across a railroad trestle until you walking across a railroad trestle and a train comes along. And you've got decisions to make. You know, we know people that had those situations in their life. But um, most rash decisions have long-lasting negative consequences. Can anybody say that's part of my testimony? I did things in my past that, that haunted me for a long time. And that happens because you're looking at the problem instead of looking to God. Um, if you look at God instead of looking at your problem, it's so much easier to get through these things. We have to put our total faith and trust in God. Amen. If you don't remember anything else, thanks. I got a lot. To remember that we got to put all of our faith and trust in God. Proverbs three five and six is, five and six says, "Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and don't lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He'll direct your path." That means those times when we start trying to over-rationalize things. We start trying to look at things and figure out the best way we can do it instead of trusting God. And oftentimes we just find ourselves in problems. Yeah. But this is, just, this is just the beginning of this. And if y'all give me a little time, I, I just want to dig into this. Because the one thing that the devil did here with Jesus, and he tries to do this with all of us, is he loves to challenge a person's identity. I say he goes beyond challenging it. He wants to attack your identity. He wants to convince you that you're somebody other than who God said that you were. <laughs> Many times there's going to be people involved in that. But this is with, with Jesus. Here's the devil. He looks at him and he said, if you are the son of God, if, that, if you who you say you are, just jump down off of here. If you are who you say you are, the devil tried on Jesus. He'll try it on you. And he does this, he tries to distract you. Don't let the devil distract you. You're going to have to stand strong in who you are. Amen. If you're a child of God, you've got to be a child of God 24-7, 365. On your worst days, that's a song. On your worst day, you're still a child of God. On your best day, you're still a child of God. That same God who loved you on your good days, the same God who loves you on your bad days. Amen. That same God who helped you through the difficult time is going to help you through the thing that you're facing today. Amen. But the devil's going to come up if that's who you are. Why don't you do this? Do this. But we've got to continue looking to Jesus. He's the author. He's the finisher of our faith. And we have to remember that, yes, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And, uh, but you have to be confident. You have to be confident in who you are. You have to be confident in who you are and whose you are. Because if you're not confident... You'll get caught up in these traps of the devil. The devil said to Jesus, he said, if you are the son of God, the angels will catch you. If you really are the son of God. And Jesus summed this up really simple. He said, don't tempt God. I want y'all to do me a favor. I want you to look to your neighbor right now and just say, don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. So many times we listen to what other people are saying. And we do some stupid stuff. If we had more time today, I'd ask for some testimonies. What's the stupidest thing you ever did that somebody told you to do? We, we might have to turn that into a Wednesday night session. Okay? Don't be stupid. Don't fall for the devil's lies and his temptations. Don't listen to the devil because you don't have anything to prove to him. Amen? He will come against you with temptation, but you don't have to listen to him. But here's the thing. You've got to know, again, who you are. You, you belong to God. You got to know his word. If you want to use his word against the devil, you got to know his word. That means you got to read his words. You got to study it. You got to learn it. The Bible says to be ready, to be diligent, to walk circumspectly, because we got to be ready for the attack of the enemy at all times. The, the lust of the eye will get you in trouble if you're not prepared. Just because we see it, don't mean we have to have it. The devil's always going to show you something in your life. And he's going to try his best to convince you that you need it. But I want to spend a few minutes talking about the pride of life. And, and I want to show you how these two connect. The next session of this is verses 8 through 10. And again, here again, again, the devil's tempting him again. How many people say three strikes, you're out? The devil's already been up bat twice and he struck out both times. So he's still coming. He's still coming. Church, please hear that part. The devil don't quit trying. He don't quit trying. He keeps trying and he keeps trying. 
But again, the devil took Jesus up on an exceedingly high mountain and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, my favorite part, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. I'm going to come back to that, but I just want to talk about that a minute. The lust of the eye, we talk about if the lust of the eye is you see it and you got to have it, then the pride of life is I see it and I deserve it. It's not fair that somebody else has something that I don't have. If y'all if y'all will hear this, because this is how the devil gets so many people caught up. Because it ain't got nothing to do with what God has done for you and what God is doing with you, but what somebody else has got. I could preach for a long time on this, but I want to stick to this. The devil basically told Jesus, he said, I want you to just forget about God and worship me. Did y'all hear that? Just that point. He went to the Son of God. He went to the Word made man. He said, I want you to forget about that God, and I want you to just fall down and worship me. If you worship me, I'm going to let you have all of this. Amen? My favorite thing to preach when I was, I think Jesus just stepped back and did like this. And he said, what are you talking about? All of that is already mine. Because everything that the Father's is mine. But then he told us whatever the Father gave him, he's going to give to us also. Amen. So the devil's over there saying, fall down, worship me, forget about God. And I'm going to give you all of this. But imagine if the devil did this with Jesus, imagine what he's going to try to offer you. I mean, I'm just saying this. I think back about the devil. I don't think sometimes, and I'm not giving him any glory. Amen. But I want you to be prepared. Because we want to sometimes act like he don't have anything that he can do to us. He convinced a third of God's angels in heaven to turn against God and follow him. And I believe this is the same lie that he told them. Look what you can have. Quit going to church. Let me show you what you can have on Sunday. Quit sowing your tithe in the church. Look what you can buy. I'm going to tell you, that's a good lie the devil uses right there. Sometimes you start looking at you, you wanted to go buy something. Well, I ain't got the money for that, but if I quit tithing, I can, give that, I, I can have that. He tries all these different things. But how did it work out for the devil when he, when he tried to lead all of God's angels away from him? Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. He didn't win then. He, can't, he doesn't have to win now. I'm going to give you three quick points. Some things about the pride of life. The pride of life will always be accompanied by compromise. The devil wants you to compromise your relationship with God. The devil wants you to compromise the Word of God. Um, compromise, what does that mean when you're talking about the pride of life? doesn't matter who you have to step on in order to get where you want to be. doesn't matter who you have to step on, who you have to do wrong just to get what you want. doesn't matter if you have to Cheat, lie, steal, or even kill to get what you want. That's the pride of life. When you start thinking, well, I want this and I don't care what it's going to take. And that, that can go so deep in your life. That can be on your job. That can be in your family. That can be in so many different places. I mean, little stuff. It can be, oh, I don't want to cheat on my taxes. Y'all went, don't go there, Pastor Daniel. Don't, don't you go there, Pastor Daniel. I, I know I've been claiming them cats. We're still trying to figure out how to do that. We ain't figured it out yet. If somebody gets that figured out, let us know. But no, it's just these little things. It's like so many things that we can do to start compromising our life and our relationship with God. Second thing about this, we've preached about this. The pride of life will often show signs of the victim mentality. That means it's never your fault. It's never your fault. Whatever you're going through in life is never your fault. Somebody's just kept you back from what you deserve. You start looking at everything you don't have and you start looking at everything somebody else has and you start blaming everybody else for it. And sometimes if you're not careful, you start blaming God. Why me? Why do they have this and why do I not have this? And you just start getting that mindset. It's just somebody that's trying to hold me back from my destiny. Pride of life will cause you to manipulate scripture to fit your own selfish desires. This is the big one. This is where we have to be very, very careful that we don't take God's word and read one line and make it what we want it to be. Amen. God said he'll give me the desires of my heart. So I have a desire for a new BMW. But I'm on a Hyundai budget. 
How am I going to get there? Oh, let's see. There are so many things that you can do. You can exaggerate your income on that credit application. All these different things that you can do, but it's just going to come back and give you trouble. But you start manipulating Scripture. Okay, well, God said he'd give me the desires in my heart. I want that car. I want your job. You're, if you've ever been there at a, at a workplace and somebody started wanting your job and they're going to do whatever they take to, to badmouth you or whatever to try to get your job, or maybe you've been on the other end of that, but you start thinking, I deserve it. I deserve that raise. I deserve that job. I deserve that car. I deserve that house. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Well, God said I can do it. I might as well. Why can't I cheat on my taxes? God said I can do all things. Why, why, why can't I go over there and pick apples off of my neighbor's tree or whatever it may be? I can do all things who, through Christ who strengthens me. We can manipulate Scripture so much to fit our needs if we're not careful. That's why you've got to know the Word of God. And you've got to read it. You've got to read it and you've got to understand it. Don't try to make it something that it's not. Too many people have done that in life. Because, and that, but that's because we're proud. We want what we want regardless of what God wants for us. And I, I've said this before. People don't like the pastor preaching about pride. But it's here. And it's real. And the devil will tempt you with this. A verse in the Bible that we like to share. But we, share, we typically only share the first half of this. We're, I'm tying this into pride. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. We love that. We overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. But the powerful part is the second half of this where it says, And they did not love their lives unto the death. They overcame the devil by the, love, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And we didn't love our lives unto the death. Talking about that, said it, it wasn't all about them. It wasn't all about getting everything that they wanted. They weren't filled with pride. They were just so strong in their faith that they overcame the devil. All right, let me share this with you. Revelation is a prophetic book. It's not a historical book. It wasn't talking about people 2,000 years ago. It's talking about us today. That we can overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony and not being filled with pride and not falling into the temptation of the pride of the life of the devil. Another thing that the Bible tells us is, uh, is, is comes from both James and Peter that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Church, I don't know about y'all, but I need all the grace I can get. I, can, I need all the grace that I can get. I just have to pray, Lord, help me be humble. Help me be humble. Lord, help me lay down my pride. Let me be that person of humility that you give us. The Apostle Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6, verses 6 through 9. Now, godliness with contentment is great gain. We have to learn to be satisfied with the things that God has given us in our life. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these things we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptations, and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Everything that we have comes from God. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. Amen. My God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. He gives us everything that we need and he blesses us with abundance. Amen. What we need will always be found in him if we search for him. But if we take our eyes off of him and we give ear to the devil, we can fall into that temptation and we can begin to operate in pride ourselves. Jesus showed us exactly how to deal with the devil. And I'm getting ready to just close this part of this up. But we need to understand this. Jesus showed us what to do. He shows us how to overcome temptation of the devil when the devil wants to stir up that spirit of pride in us. Matthew chapter 4 verses 10 through 11 then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And when he said that, the devil left him, and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. Amen. You can stand up to the devil. You can stand up to temptation. You can stand up against whatever the devil's throwing at you. If you're a child of God, you have the authority to use the name of Jesus. We can speak the name of Jesus and we can apply it. 
You can say, away with me, Satan. Who in here today says, I just need to get to stand up to the devil? Say, away with you, Satan. Away with you, Satan. You, you can't attack me in that place in my life any longer. And when you do that, you just walk the devil, you just watch the devil walk away. And when he walks away, you can feel that supernatural peace of God in your life. Amen. There's nothing in the world except the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. But we put our focus on God and we can learn to be satisfied with the things that God gives us. And he does bless us abundantly. Amen. I'm going to make y'all happy. We're fixing to move into a little different direction of preaching. We're going to get into talking a lot about grace. Amen. We're talking about the grace, the, everything that God gives us in our life, the things that we don't deserve. Amen. But today, I just want to close this up today. I want you to remember these things. Remember, Jesus used the word of God when the devil came against him. And he walked out as an overcomer. And we are overcomers because he overcame the world. Amen. Can I do this today? Can I just pray a blessing over you? And I want you guys to get on out of here. Go spend time with your fathers. Celebrate Father's Day. A lot of us here today, our fathers have already gone on to be with the Lord. Amen. But let's just remember them today. And celebrate them. I've enjoyed watching some of the photos on Facebook pop up of different folks of their fathers. And um, there's, some, there's some great memories. And, re and rem remember those today. Amen. I know Shay, Shay here lately has sent me a few. His dad was a pastor that he lost earlier this year. And his dad, he sends me every now and then some little video or audio clips of his daddy's preaching. And I've enjoyed sharing those with you as well. But can we stand together today? Let me just pray for you. And just pray the Lord's blessing on you. If you're here today and you need special prayer, we're just going to go ahead and release. I will be here. I just want you to come down and let me pray for you today. But right now, Father God, we bless you. We thank you. We give you glory and praise. We thank you for every person in this room, this house today, God. We thank you for the fathers here today. We pray your special blessing upon them. But Lord, we look to you, our Abba Father, today. We say thank you, God, for everything that you do for us. We thank you, Lord, for just providing for us. We thank you, God, for giving us the strength to stand against the enemy when he comes to tempt us. We thank you, Lord, for giving us your word. This is a tool that we can use to face the, the realities of life and the temptations of the enemy when they come. Lord, I do pray a special blessing on, again, every person here today as we leave this house, that we just rejoice in you. As we celebrate our natural fathers, Lord, we just remember our heavenly father today as well. We would say happy Father's Day to you today, God. We just give you glory for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You guys have a great day. Look forward to seeing you again real soon.